it's Erin. Today we're going to be going through a legs and glutes workout. We're building muscle, but we're not haphazardly adding muscle just anywhere. We're focusing on the characteristics of what makes a great pair of legs. Now, what do you think of when you think of the perfect legs? To me, I think of nice round glutes, that quad sweep, that hamstring peak, and curvy calves. It creates a comprehensive, beautiful flowing picture from top to bottom. So today we're gonna to be working with intensity, we're gonna do compound movements, we'll be doing quite a bit of volume, and focusing on slight variations that are going to bring out those beautiful details and characteristics that make a great pair of legs. So without further ado, let's train. Our first exercise is a front foot elevated split squat on the Smith machine. Now, if you don't have access to a Smith machine, you can do something similar using just a bench. Keep in mind, you're not going to have the same stability as you would get on the Smith machine. So here I've got the bench set up in front of the Smith machine. I'm placing my entire foot on the bench, but my weight is pushed through the heel. And the reason for this is I really want to accentuate that glute activation. Once you get that upper leg below parallel, you're really activating those glutes. So you don't need a lot of weight. In fact, I would keep the weight lighter and just really focus on form. You want a little bit of a posterior tilt to your pelvis. So tilt that pelvis forward just a bit. And if you're a tall girl like me, really pay attention to the top of that Smith machine. So I can get just about full extension, but not much further before I bonk my head. So really just pay attention to your surroundings when you're doing the whole setup. Now, when you switch to the other leg, make sure that your setup is even from left to right. You want to be sure that you're hitting both legs exactly the same. And if you can't get that low, it's okay. Just really focus on pushing the weight through the heel Take your time at the bottom or mid rep and really think about squeezing those glutes. You're gonna feel it a little bit in your quads too, that's okay. And keep that knee in line with the foot. So make sure you're thinking about pushing the knee out just a little bit, both on the way up and on the way down. You don't want it to cave in at all. Next exercise is a dumbbell RDL. We're gonna put a slight twist to it though. Feet are gonna be a little bit wider than shoulder width. And as you lower the weight, think about touching that dumbbell just behind your heels. What this is gonna do is it's really gonna hit those glutes. It's gonna hit the hamstrings. So we're training the hamstrings kind of in that elongated hip extension, should be hitting the hamstring peak and that glute ham tie-in, the uh, mysterious anatom an anatomical area that does not exist, but uh, everybody wants that definition. So you wanna really hit the glutes here. You're gonna hit the lower glutes, upper hamstrings. Keep a slight bend to the knee, and I like to round the shoulders just a little bit and squeeze those glutes at the top. I'm going for constant tension here. So I'm not going to lock out completely at the top or not going to extend completely, but going to favor keeping that tension, keeping that connection to the glutes the entire time. I push my weight through the outside of my foot just a little bit too. And really pay attention to your weight distribution because this can have a profound impact on exactly where you're hitting on the muscle. Next exercise is a hack squat. This variation, we're gonna go onto the toes. So your weight is gonna be basically through the ball of your foot and your toes. If you don't have a hack squat machine, you can do these on the Smith machine. And if you don't have the Smith machine, you can do these using a plate to elevate your heels and hold dumbbells. Really focusing on keeping the core tight, and really keeping the weight through the ball of the foot. As you shift the weight to the ball of your foot, you're hitting more of the front of your leg. 
So this is going to bring out that quad sweep. It's going to really help with quad development and it's an isometric calf workout too. So this is kind of a two for one that you're getting here and the calves are not typically used to isometric movements. So if you do just calf raises and you haven't tried this exercise, you might be really sore from this. So feet are pretty close together. You can actually go a little bit wider. You can go shoulder width if you'd like. And exhale on the way up, inhale on the way down. And think about going nice and slow so you can keep that mind muscle connection through those Let's move on to the lying leg curl. Now this is going to be a slight variation also. So you're going to focus on lifting your upper body off of the bench, keeping a posterior tilt to those hips. So think about tucking your pelvis under, and I want you to dorsiflex your feet on the way up, give a little squeeze at the top, and point your toes on the way down. So this is going to really help isolate those hamstrings you should feel it in the lower part of your hamstrings. And by keeping your upper body off the pad and by using that posterior tilt, you're really taking a lot of the other muscles out of the equation and it really helps to focus on just the hamstrings. And you find when you use this setup that you might do 50 to 60% of the weight that you would normally do, but you're gonna feel it <laughs> so, so much more than if you were to just go heavy and rep the weights out and really focus on keeping that core tight, really focus on tucking that pelvis. Use that pause rep at the top to maintain the mind-muscle connection. Really, really important here. We'll finish up this workout with calf raises and sideline clam supersets. So here on the calf raise, feet are about shoulder width apart. I've got the ball of my foot on the platform and focusing on getting a nice stretch. And instead of thinking about raising your heels, think about pushing your heels forward. So think about pushing your heels forward through the ankle. This small change can lead to dramatic results with the calves and really helps with that mind-muscle connection. If the weight is a little bit lighter, you can keep a, a nice straight leg. If the weight is heavier, keep a soft knee. You don't wanna lock your, your knees out on this exercise. I'm gonna go directly to the floor. for the side lying clam. This is an excellent exercise for abductors, for upper glutes. So if you wanna build that shelf, this is a great exercise for that. Now keep in mind you're gonna need pretty high reps to get good results with this exercise. And here I'm in a side lying position. Body is in alignment. Feet are, one foot is stacked on the other and I'm just focusing on squeezing that glute on the way up. And this typically, you're not going to feel a lot in this exercise for the first 10 to 15 reps. So we're gonna do 30 reps here, and it's that last five to 10 reps where you'll really feel it. Make sure you get a good squeeze at the top and make sure you keep your body in straight alignment.
You can do this workout up to twice a week and keep it in your rotation for three to four weeks, making sure that you're working towards progressive overload. And progressive overload simply means that you're making the exercises more difficult with each workout. So for example, if you're doing 100 pounds on an exercise this week, next week you might do 105 pounds or 110 pounds. If you don't feel like going up in weight or perhaps you're kind of pushing the limits to how heavy you can go, you can always increase your number of reps. A good rule of thumb is to increase by about 10% each week uh, as far as volume, and this is gonna help you get really great results. And don't forget to keep track of your progress, whether it's with pictures or with measurements, something quantifiable so you can compare this week to four weeks from now. You'll be amazed at the progress you can make when you place pictures side by side, whereas if you see yourself in the mirror every single day, you're not always aware of those positive changes. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and don't forget to click that little bell. You'll be the first to know whenever a new video comes out. And if you try this workout and you love it, please tag me on social media. I really enjoy seeing your progress and seeing you take the exercises and make them your own. Thanks for watching. Until next time, train hard, y'all.